Start your wellness journey at Whole Foods Market, where it's jumpstart January through the 16th. Stock up on supplements with some of the year's biggest savings. Plus, save on air-chilled organic boneless skinless chicken breasts, organic honey crisp apples, organic large Haas avocados, and more. And since Whole Foods Market is the only certified organic national grocer, it's easy to make them your wellness destination. Jumpstart your January now at Whole Foods Market. Today on CityCast Madison. Four Wisconsin state legislators have sponsored a bipartisan bill aimed at supporting veterans' mental health, this time with a new approach, magic mushrooms. More than a party drug, magic mushrooms or psilocybin and similar compounds like MDMA are being lauded as possible breakthrough therapies for PTSD. The new bill would create a pilot program with UW-Madison's Transdisciplinary Center for Research in Psychoactive Substances to explore the medicinal use of these psychedelics for vets suffering from PTSD. We had to know more. So we sat down with the center's two lead researchers, Paul Hudson, the founding director, and Christopher Nicholas, assistant professor at UW's Department of Family Medicine and Community Health. It's Wednesday, January 3rd. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Paul, hello. Hello, Bianca. How are you? Very good. And Christopher, welcome. Hi. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you both. So, Paul, you're at the forefront of this pilot study focused on psilocybin. Big picture, what is this pilot? We have a study looking at uh, implementing psilocybin dosing in individuals with an opioid use disorder and another in methamphetamine use disorder. And Chris has been doing some uh, fantastic work on the MDMA work for PTSD. Chris, maybe you could say something about that. Yeah, so um, as a clinical psychologist and um, neuroscientist, we were invited to be part of a multi-site clinical trial, a phase three randomized controlled trial of MDMA assisted therapy for post-traumatic stress disorder. And so we've been part of two phase three trials, which have now both been published in Nature Medicine. It's open access for whoever's interested um, to download and read, um, which has shown that, you know, three doses of MDMA assisted therapy separated about between about three to five weeks between each dose with two therapists under controlled conditions looks quite uh, effective for uh, PTSD symptoms. We saw about an 80% response and um, almost just under about 50% of the participants in uh, that trial uh, went into remission with their symptoms. So it's really encouraging and um, we're hopeful that this will be a potential treatment for people uh, in the near future. This is groundbreaking research that you you all are working on at the center, not to like totally set you up to your own horn, <laughs> but like, are there other centers doing work like this? Like this feels very cutting edge. There are other centers around the country and even around the world that are doing research with these compounds and other psychedelic compounds. Uh, MDMA and psilocybin are rather unique in that they've both been um, identified by the FDA as breakthrough drugs, breakthrough medications, as an adjunct for the treatment of PTSD, and psilocybin as an adjunct for psychotherapy for depression. And so I'm assuming this is why um, the legislators are looking to partner with you all, because you're doing this work on PTSD, and this is obviously a, a huge issue for the veteran community, being able to heal trauma, that sort of thing. Sure. And we're excited about this bipartisan bill that's been introduced to the Wisconsin legislature, looking at uh, psychoactive substances for the treatment of PTSD and related uh, disorders. Um, and we're looking at looking at a combination of perhaps uh, multiple drugs for that. And so, Chris, over the years, you found that things like depression, trauma and addiction can be treated with psychedelics and MDMA, which um, most people think about them as as party drugs. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it there is a long history. Right. But, you know, I think where we have to differentiate these from the categorization of party drug is that one, um, you know, in the context of MDMA, we're using pharmaceutical grade MDMA that is FDA approved and regulated. Um, we're using it 
in the context of both of these compounds, psilocybin and MDMA, in the uh, in the context of a therapeutic container where they have therapists, uh, these participants are um, heavily screened, both psychiatrically, medically, psychologically, for inclusion. Um, but there are there is potential for abuse, of course, um, in an uncontrolled environment. Any of these compounds could set someone up for um, harm to them, themselves or others. So we're talking about the use in much in a very much a therapeutic clinical environment. Absolutely, and then that's true for any medicine, I imagine, and painkillers and that sort of thing. And that's actually one of one of the uh, issues you guys are studying, or one of the things I saw that you're working on parsing out is the experience of. Um, looking at something like psilocybin, the importance of the experiential um, consciousness shift, the impact of that on someone's um, betterment through the therapy versus just um, sort of the brain changes that the drug activates. Is that correct? Exactly. Psilocybin is unique and classic psychedelics work, you know, a unique feature is that they all bind to what's called a serotonin 5H2A receptor. And if you block that receptor, you won't have any subjective effects um, like the psychedelic effects that are, you know, that are uh, well um, known to everyone. Um, so we developed uh, an early methodology that we're still testing out. We don't have strong conclusions yet, but um what we tried to do is try to block the memory for the experience to then test to see if you don't have a memory of the experience, do you still have any sort of meaningful associations to it or actually potentially therapeutic outcomes? Start your wellness journey at Whole Foods Market, where it's jumpstart January through the 16th. Stock up on supplements with some of the year's biggest savings. Plus, save on air-chilled organic boneless skinless chicken breast, organic honey crisp apples, organic large Haas avocados, and more. And since Whole Foods Market is the only certified organic national grocer, it's easy to make them your wellness destination. Jumpstart your January now at Whole Foods Market. I'm someone actually, I have CPTSD, and so I'm very interested in, in the science of like how memories can be healed. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so um, esoteric in, in many ways, mm -hmm. uh, all of this stuff, and it get we can get really deep into the, the weeds. But am I correct in thinking, Paul, is, is the work trying to like move more like electrical activity through um, places that are maybe storing those really like intense problematic memories? Like if someone is a veteran and they were, you know, um, under fire and that that memory gets stuck in the brain. Like, how does it work? Like how, how, what is um, a drug like psilocybin doing um, to unlock health, I guess, benefits or, or really clear that damaged part of the brain? Well, I'm going to actually defer to Chris on that. He's uh, more of the neuroimager and uh, the clinical psychologist, but we do feel that they work in different mechanisms, the psilocybin and MDMA, but we're hopeful about is that they will have a synergistic effect uh, when dosed properly. And we're not sure what yet properly means. Yeah, so two things to your question. Um, one, we don't really know, you know the, the full mechanism of psilocybin anyway. There hasn't been any studies yet to explore psilocybin for trauma, and there's some reasons for that. Uh, psilocybin can be a little bit more jarring of an experience initially for people. And there is an element of needing to relinquish control, volitional control, because once you take psilocybin or any psychoactive substance, those effects are going to come on. There's a, a broad constellation of symptoms that make up PTSD, but some themes are there's, you know, there's difficulty with control. There's um, vigilance around triggers and trauma reminders and threat. There's isolation. So is psilocybin the best first line psychedelic for PTSD? We don't know. There's no data to suggest it. What we think is there's more data for P or MDMA, MDMA so far. Um, and what we think there is happening is that the, the pharmacological properties of MDMA allows people to actually tolerate their trauma so they can experience memories and reminders of that trauma in a way that's not completely overwhelming, still challenging, but it allows people to reprocess them in a way where they can experience the memory 
um, but also then start to connect it to new ideas about themselves, their lar larger lived history, their values, their relationships in their lives. So it becomes more integrated um, as part of um, their full life uh, autobiography. But we actually don't know the full mechanism there either. Clinically, I'm, cl I'm speaking from my own clinical experience, my understanding of memory and trauma, but lots of room for a need for exploration in terms of the mechanisms across all of these compounds. Um, so one idea we have is we think that maybe combining MDMA with psilocybin. So MDMA, you take a dose of MDMA-assisted therapy, you do that once or twice, once a month, and then you follow that up with psilocybin. You know, after someone has become a little bit more familiarized with a non-ordinary state that could potentially be therapeutic, we know for some data that psilocybin produces rapid antidepressant effects in some participants, uh, still understanding the full duration of that, also has shown some impressive positive impact on substance use, like alcohol use disorder. Um, so we think a combined model like this could really address the full breadth of, you know, challenges one is facing with PTSD. It makes a lot of sense. If I'm hearing you guys correctly, um, it's like a cadre. We're thinking about a, a number of therapeutic interventions together, pairing psilocybin and MDMA. And it, it's a holistic approach, which is feels like where health healthcare is hopefully moving, <laughs> thinking about a first rather than, uh, you know, a silver bullet. It's not approach. a silver bullet. I can speak to the data and say that we don't, we don't see it as a silver bullet. Yeah. I, I want to know, Paul, could you expand a little bit about your center's involvement if the bill were to pass? You know, we're hearing about a lot of different forms of research. Like, what what is your the direct involvement look like? So, the bill, if passed, would establish a fund to do uh, research with psilocybin and related drugs in veterans um, with PTSD and related disorders. One of the concerns that some people have mentioned is why just veterans is not others with uh, sexual abuse trauma and uh, first responder trauma. And those are all very legitimate uh, groups that we would like to study. But in terms of the funding that we're likely to have, uh, we feel that it, a focus on one group may provide a more clear understanding of whether or not there's a benefit as opposed to uh, possible differences in the kind of therapy needed, the kind of dosing frequency, the kind of sequencing necessary uh, for one versus the other. So. We feel that um, we have some really great protocols that we would like to um, implement uh, targeted at the the veteran population with PTSD, as Chris has described already, with the MDMA possibly combined with psilocybin. And really what's holding that up is uh, funding. The uh, NIH has not really come forth yet with a substantial amount of funding for um, these drugs. And the other thing, frankly, is to identify what barriers there might be in various groups of individuals, veterans or not, to participating in either research or when the drug is approved, even if it's just MDMA uh, assisted therapy for PTSD down the road in a year or two when it's approved by the FDA, what would keep them from participating? You know, right now these drugs are technically illegal if you're not in a clinical study. There's no evidence that the psilocybin is addictive, uh, that there is an abuse syndrome associated with it, although. That might be the case with MDMA. We have not seen that in patients who have been in clinical trials, in, in these structured clinical trials. But there still may be some concern on the part of multiple uh, groups about participating in a uh, therapy that in the past has been associated with an illegal use of the drug. Uh, the other thing that we're really struggling with is anticipating the approval of MDMA-assisted therapy for PTSD and, and a few years later, uh, psilocybin for depression. Uh, as breakthrough drugs, how do we prepare the the therapists as well as the uh, acceptance by the potential patients? How do we establish enough therapists and therapeutic sites to treat the number of individuals with PTSD or, or depression uh, to accommodate the need? And this is one of the things that we're we're grappling with in terms of a training program here at the university that we're trying to develop. We're talking to some of the the administrators at the state level to look at possible credentialing criteria and also educational activities that we might do across the state in, in various venues. 
Yeah, that makes a, a lot of sense in terms of for your first point about um, veterans being the first group. A rising tide lifts all boats, hopefully. Um, and the second point that you were getting to, that you're really being thoughtful about, you're not going to say, okay, this works, and then leave the entire infrastructure around it to just, okay, handle this new thing. I, certainly right now it seems, uh, well, it doesn't seem our, our nation is facing a mental health crisis. And so the the excitement and desire for answers is, is huge. Um, can I ask before we let you guys go, both of you, like what is your hope for this kind of research in the future? Like I, I hear kind of the immediate, but let's say 10, 10 years down the line, like where would you like to see us? Well, I'd, I'd like to see um, research continue to be funded and um, also Hopefully there will be approval of some of these compounds, um, you know, in due time. And and then also, you know, I hope there's ways that we can increase access, access to not only these treatments, but to all, all different types of um, health care and mental health care. Um, these aren't going to be the only treatments out there. There are treatments, particularly, I, you know, where in my based on my expertise in terms of psychotherapy, their psychotherapies work for depression, work for PTSD. Um, so we want to be able not only just to create access for psychedelics, but a, a broader access to the, a, a broader scope of care. I agree with Chris, and I'll add that we have a lot of interesting other drugs that are in the pipeline being investigated. Some work faster. Um, and come off faster than the psilocybin or MDMA. So we're not really sure how that might compare with the effects of psilocybin, whether you need a, uh, a longer experience or if you might be able to get by with a shorter experience and be able to treat more people per day. We're also looking at whether or not uh, group therapy might be more effective in, as well as efficient in terms of uh, treating individuals that might be able to share um, their experiences in either in real time or after the fact. And then there's also some really interesting work that's coming out of several laboratories asking the question, do you really need that psychedelic experience to have a therapeutic benefit? There's something that's called, been called uh, psychoneuroplasticity, where there seems to be some uh, additional sprouting of uh, spikes on various neurons, more uh, uh, synapses created in the brain, possibly some sense of a, uh, a healing opportunity, or at least um, some modification of existing brain connections. And it's not clear, based on the drugs that they're seeing this effect in, that these are going to all be all associated with a psychedelic experience. And if that's the case, then perhaps we can simplify the care by administering drugs in the future that are not psychedelic but have the same effects on the brain that we're, we're seeking to have, these beneficial effects. But we're looking at MDMA hopefully being approved by the FDA in the next year or two in psilocybin, uh, hopefully for depression in like 26 or 27. So I'd say that we're within five years of having both of these drugs likely approved. And at that point, um, we're going to have to figure out how to optimally use them. Right around the corner. Well, you guys are doing the good work and really comprehensive. Paul Hudson, Christopher Nicholas, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you for having us. That's Christopher Nicholas, assistant professor at UW's Department of Family Medicine and Community Health, and Paul Hudson, founding director at UW Medicine's Transdisciplinary Center for Research in Psychoactive Substances. By the way, the center is still looking for research participants for their studies on psychedelics and their impacts on our mental health. If you're interested in learning more about how you can participate, go check out our show notes for a link. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with someone who's willing to try new things? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Until then, 